So let's re review what we've got. Well, in the previous video, we installed, we sorry, we configured an instance of SAP Panel 1. This was done on a Linux machine, and this was already pre pre installed. All we had to do essentially was uh, instantiate an instance of SAP Panel 1. Now what we're going to do in this video is create another machine, but this is going to be Windows and this is essentially going to be for all of our clients or our client tools. So this is going to be specifically for our clients such as visual intelligence, putty, so on and so forth. Now later on when we configure all the tools we're going to obviously make sure that the client can talk to the server. So this is seen as our server machine, this is our client machine. The key thing however is this, we're going to access our Windows box using remote desktop. So we're going to access the Windows box using that remote desktop. Now the problem is we know we'll, we'll be able to find out the name of the Windows box from the Amazon Web Services you use the login administrator but the password is obtained from the pen file so what we're essentially going to do is we're going to open up the pen file we're going to paste this into our Amazon Web Services and it will give us the password that we use to access our Windows box so once we've got our password we then of course use the machine name, the login and the password to access our Windows box so we can start installing the various clients. So let's go ahead and get on with those demonstrations. In this video we're going to create a Windows machine which we're then going to install some software on and connect it to a Linux box which contains SAP Panel 1 which is in the Amazon Web Services. So just to review what we've got, within our instances we've already created our HANA SAP, uh, our SAP HANA 1 instance and the instance is running. What we're going to do now is create a new instance but it'll be a Windows machine where we're going to install client connectivity so we can download the installation software for HANA Studio and the HANA client and where we can also install other tools such as Tomcat for this project. So the first thing we need to do is create that Windows instance. So I'm going to launch an instance using the classic wizard and in reality we can use any Windows instance. I'm going to use the first one that I find from this list which is a small instance which is 64 bits and which contains a um, base image of Windows Server 2008. So I'll select that image. We can leave the default settings. Uh, I'm going to leave it in my zone, which is USA East, but by default it should go to that zone. Then I'll click on Continue. We don't need to change anything here, so I'm going to click on Continue in terms of our instance details. This is our storage device configuration, which again we can leave by default. We can add a tag if we want, but again I'm going to leave this as it is. We don't need to change anything here. In the last video when we created our SAP HANA 1 instance on the Linux server, we created a key pair called SAP HANA Academy. Because we've only got one key pair, we can use this existing key pair. So by default we've only got one. It will be selected in this part of the wizard, so we can leave it as it is. So I'll click on continue and then we can choose the, our default security group so we've already got one called SAP Panel 1 Revision 38 so I'm actually going to use the same security group we can then review all our settings but everything looks fine so then we can lastly launch our instance so while it's launching we can click and close and we can see that the server is starting. So while the server's starting, I'll just pause the recording of this video and wait for it to be running. So now we can see that that server is running. So the only thing we really have to do here is maybe give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name by selecting the green pencil 
in my name area on the screen for that instance and I'm going to call this Windows Box and click on Save. So now we've got a Windows Box which is running and we've got a HANA server on Linux which is also running. So after a few minutes of course what you're going to want to do is connect to that server. So this is the server name that you're going to connect to. But what you can do as well is you can, what you'll need as well is to know the password that you log into that machine with. So to find it, you right click and you select get Windows password. Now, normally password generation of the Windows box will take around 15 to 30 minutes. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording of the video, wait for 15 or so minutes until we've got the Windows password here. We can then unencrypt the password and then we'll be able to log in to that Windows machine. So I'll just re pause the recording of the video now. So after 15 or so minutes, I can again go back to my Windows box, right click and select Get Windows Password. So as it says, to access the remote desktop, we need a Windows password um, and it's encrypted. So we need to decrypt that password alongside that key pair. So essentially what I need to do here is um, insert the um, contents of the private key into this box. So I, I'm using a Mac, it doesn't really make much difference. So I'm gonna go into my shared folders and I've saved the key in a specific folder which is in within my Dropbox. So I've saved the key actually here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that key by right clicking and saying open with and I'm actually going to open this with TextPad. So again you just need to do this on a Windows box or on your Mac. So I'm going to open this with TextPad. So then all I need to do is copy this text, the whole text, all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to go back to that page and paste in that private key here. When we've done that, now we can click on decrypt password. So then here we'll see that decrypted password. So obviously it makes sense that then you were to write this password down and save it for later use. So now that we've got that password, we can actually log into the machine. So I'm going to close this window. Um, the window that we create connect to is this one. So I'm going to right click and copy that. And then again on my Mac, you can use either a remote desktop for Windows on the Mac, or of course you can use remote desktop on your Windows machine. I'm going to launch a remote desktop connection and then I'll connect to that machine. So I'll connect. You then will put in that password and then you'll click on OK. So you might get prompted that the certificate isn't correct. That's fine. Just click on connect. And then it should log you into that Windows box. There we go. So while the Windows box is starting up, again, I'll just pause the video and let any services start up on that box before we start to configure the Windows machine. So now that we've logged in, we can just select the location for the network. I'm just going to select it as work. It doesn't really make a difference what you select here and then click on close. Now this is your, this will be the base Windows image. You can see it's a very small image, which doesn't really matter because again, it's for training purposes. But there's a few things that I would do to configure this instance. The first thing I would do is we should switch off the enhanced security configuration within Internet Explorer. So we can do this by simply launching our server manager. And within the server manager, we have here configure IE ESC. And I'm, again, I'm going to switch these both off because we don't really need these. Again, it's just for training purposes. In the production environment, of course, you might want to configure this but that's not the purpose of this video. So that's the first step. So now we've successfully connected to the Windows machine that we'll use in this project. So in the next video, we're going to install a putty and a putty generator 
in order that we can connect using PuTTY to our HANA instance on the Linux machine and start the HANA server. Again, hopefully you've learned from this video that it's very easy to create a Windows instance within Amazon Web Services that we can use to connect to a SAP HANA 1 system.